Switch it, they'll come up, chomp it. They see me tizzing, they hate it. Do you fish? No. You know, people who don't fish think that fishing is lazy or boring, but it is the complete opposite. There are a hundred little decisions to be made, variables to be considered, and you're never quite sure what made the difference. Did I cast too high, too far to the left? Did I reel it in too slow or, or, or too fast? Is the lure too shiny or too dull? Do I stay here or should I go over there? And you know it's not luck, but you do not know by how much. Because I am never disappointed out here because I don't expect anything because anything is possible. I can be hopeful out here, even in failure. Because I know if I just go out there around that tree, it might be different. Something might be different. Something I do might make a difference. Hell yeah! Angler's choice, baby! John Moore's! Wide River! Ranger! Train! Nitro! Let's go, baby! Woo! What the hell is even that? You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. We are finally, I think, in really the spring season because daylight savings time is here. We got a little bit more time in the evening, and we just finished up our first BFL in our region of the Piedmont Division on the old Smith Mountain Lake. Uh, earlier today, uh, Brody's episode dropped. He had 2407, which uh, before we kind of interview all of our guests, we have a ton of people in the queue. We had a little thing that I think this is going to become a thing that we do where we just take little bets on what we think the weights are going to be in the big fish. And I was, well, I almost, I nailed second place at 2104. I was like one ounce off, but because uh, I didn't know idea that someone was going to catch a 24 pound bag. But we have a couple people here that actually figured it out. And then we had a couple other people that we were just the cheering section. And we had our own little adventures as well. So let me see. I guess the first person I'm going to introduce, you know him, you love him, uh, Boyd Duckett Jr. Uh, I hopped in the boat with him. How are you doing tonight, sir? Fantastic. And uh, you're welcome for that promo there on the intro. Hopefully uh, that can get some more sponsored dollars to the show. I've been talking to dad, but, you know, he's kind of hard to deal with. He's got that uh, reputation in the industry. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, our next one on the panel, uh, who did fish the BFL there, uh, he had a really grind practice. He absolutely wins practice every time he goes and he still was able to guts and nuts at any event. Uh, Hunter, how are you doing? I'm doing good. That was one of the best intros I've ever seen. You <laughs> yeah, get your flowers on that. That was, that was killer. I, I got to thank Boyd for that one. I really appreciate it. <laughs> now, hey, you know, I, I do what I can. <laughs> Now, I like how you're like dubbed too as well there, Boyd. It's kind of nice. Um, and the next guest, we have him. Uh, some say he catches a dink just to know how it feels. He's going to take Matt Allen's job someday on Tactical Bassin. You know him. You love him. We got Mick Jesus, <laughs> a.k.a. McCluskey, <laughs> a.k.a. Fish Whisperer. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me as an honorary member of the BFL boys. No, absolutely. I, I really think uh, our next guest is going to say, really, your pet fuck on the boat probably helped got him. the best hair on the BFL trail, I'll tell you right now. That nobody will ever get to see again. Thanks Show to it to him, baby. <laughs> no. We'll save, that for, we'll save that for the end. <laughs> <laughs> and last, but certainly not least, he uh, put on his big boy pants this past weekend, and he cracked out his first ever uh, top 10 Top top six, baby. Uh, eighteen eleven at Smith Mountain Lake, which was absolutely a rainstorm. Matt of SB Fishing, how are you doing, sir? Doing great. Happy to be here with the boys. Yeah, uh, yeah. And again, as always, uh, ask a question, win a prize. Ask a question, win a prize. That's how this bad boy works. Um, I'm thinking really to start us off. Let's go back a week ago. This is everyone's first uh, BFL of the year. Uh, we can go round table. What were your thoughts going into it? 
I was rooting for the boys. <laughs> okay, there That's we go. That's a lot of thoughts bouncing around. Hey, not <laughs> yeah. everybody, calm down. Only two right, okay, I'll, go, Jesus. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. So I was I was pumped. Um, I got seventh last year, so I figured same time of year, you know, pretty similar weather. I was expecting, you know, the same result, but that didn't happen. But that's all right. But it, we, um, I had probably one of the most fun practices I've ever had. I just every day I caught big fish. Um, but yeah, so I was very excited going into it, and um, practice was fun, but tournament was a little bit tougher. But yeah, yeah, a lot of high expectations going into it. Why? Why did you have such high expectation? Just because you did well there in the past? And it's just Smith Mountain in March. I mean, that's you can't really set up a March tournament better on a better lake than Smith Mountain in Virginia. Um, I mean, you know it's going to take over 20-something to win and to see 24 win. Like, It's the ideal place to be in March, in my opinion. It's the only redeeming quality of our BFL schedules. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other redeeming quality is you had a chance to break your curse that every time you go to Smith Mountain Lake, something breaks. Yeah, and I didn't break that curse. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> it's funny, like, as long as I've known you, I think you've only had, what, one tournament that there wasn't an issue? But the flip side is, if anything broke on my boat, I just have to sink the damn thing because I couldn't fix shit. I don't even know where spark plugs go in my big engine, let alone all the stuff you deal with. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna make it back to way and I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to figure out how to get back to way at some point. Matt, what, what were your thoughts going into this thing? I just wanted to do better than I did last year. I had a pretty decent practice last year and i ended up with like one fish i caught a five pounder in the first 30 minutes of the day and then i didn't catch another so hey i, I don't like, know what that's like <laughs> um but i knew it was going to be a good event even i mean i figured it would be practice was really good the weather's been pretty warm this year i felt good about it um granted leading up to tournament day was like just the shittiest weather you can ask for like a high of 50 and i think we got like an inch and a half of rain or something so i knew we'd have to do a little pivoting on tournament day but yeah and, and for the people that are probably going to ask us in the comment section those are the only two that fish the tournament uh phil and i's job there was to drink and destroy the house and then we took out his his boat uh just to I'm do a little roughing so good at my job <laughs> <laughs> so good at my job yep yep we uh ripped it out in the gambler uh got tommy on his first first ever glide fish which was sick that was a special and, moment and um about two hours later i was too hungover to function so we uh brought it back in i caught a four and a half pounder on the uh taxi trout glide on thursday man that was a crazy day i saw so many fish pulling up super shallow chasing gills around like it it was springtime 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 and then the next day just <clears throat> everything <laughs> collapsed and back to early march but uh oh yeah i had a blast the craziest thing about that day was seeing two things stood out to me fishing with you. One is how you were pulling striper off of laydowns and how you changed from pale white to color in your face like in five minutes. It looked like you were going to die. Well, yeah, that's two separate conversations. <laughs> but contrary to popular belief, tri stripers do like to hold off of uh, swings with laydowns on them. So you know i don't know that's about all i got i don't have much to offer this podcast so hopefully people <laughs> ask some questions or something as far as the actual tournament and uh the week went you know drank some beer and burned some gas well i mean if we're gonna talk about that like uh and then uh mccluskey how did you fit into it how the hell did you end up there honestly like uh, i don't I'm think working, people know this i'm working down in roanoke so it just kind of timed up perfectly where you guys were coming down and I come, came over and fished with Matt for a couple hours on Thursday and chilled at the Airbnb. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't fish the tournament. I would have tried to jump in as a co at least if I would, had been in town this last weekend. But went up to Deep Creek Lake this weekend and rooted you guys on. And now I'm back down here. So the, the first thing I want to throw out to everyone here since – it's interesting actually having a house to practice with when you go into these events, whether it was this, High Rock last year, Kerr. 
how do you maximize practicing when you have a group of people you're going down with? And I, I'm really going to be putting this towards uh, Hunter and, and SB, but anyone else chime in? Like, do you guys work together or do you guys just not talk like an old married couple? Like, how does that work? S, no, SB and I talk, we talk the whole time. Yeah, we're pretty yeah. much, um, and I had someone ask me about this today. It's like, you you have to have, it's a delicate situation because a lot of a lot of things can go wrong when you're sharing you know everything but i know matt and i trust each other and i mean it's literally we wanted to start on the same exact doc and we're both like no you take it no you take it like like that's just how we are um and both want to see each other succeed so we definitely uh work together a lot and it usually works out pretty well Wait, so you guys are sharing the same dock? I mean, it's a 30,000 acre lake. Like, how does that work? <laughs> well, we, this is what was funny. Like, neither of us mentioned where we found these fish. And then, oh, wait, no, that's not how it went. So I fished <laughs> this stretch and I'm fishing a glide bait. And there's, uh, I'm, if, I'm really not trying to catch anything. I'm just like casting along docks and seeing where I'm pulling fish off of, not trying to catch them, but I'm also, like I'll rip the glide bait away and then slowly creep it to see if I can bring the fish up to the boat so I can just see them with my eyes without live scope. And this one dock I pulled up on, I had four, four pounders follow the glide. And I'm like, okay, there's giant, like there's giant fish right here. Just they're going to be here. And maybe like two or three hours later, I get a text from Hunter saying, Hey, can, uh, can I come meet you real quick? I need you to get a picture of this fish for me. And, or can you come meet me rather? And he sends me his pin and then I didn't really look at it. He ended up coming, coming to meet me. And then I looked at his pin later and I was like, no way. Literally caught that five and a half pounder off of the dock that I moved those four fours off of with the glide. And I was like, dog, that's crazy. I can't believe we, like, we both just stumbled upon this spot and the stretch was real. The whole stretch was good. Um, I moved those four big ones and then I like kept fishing down. Then I switched to a mag draft. Like I pinned one that was four um, and I had a couple other bites on it. And I was like, okay, I'm leaving this alone. And then come to find out Hunter fished the same stretch. And that's where he caught a good one. Both of us were like, well, we both want to fish this stretch. So what did we come up with? I was like, I'll start here. You start there and we'll just meet yep. in the middle. Yep. That was the plan. It seemed fair to me. I mean, yeah. You were able to hit the ones you really wanted to hit. I was able to hit or start on the one I really wanted to hit. And I, if you were like, I really want it, I would have, I didn't really care. Yeah, exactly. If Matt would have been like, you know, that I, I really want to start and fish this whole stretch, I've been like, yeah, no problem. Like I'll go, I'll go somewhere else or and I'll come back after you or I'll, yeah. I'll not fish at all. Like it wasn't, that's just, you know, trusting your, your teammate and, and trying to work together. So you both end up successful. So let's say day one, um, did, did one of you say like, I'm going to go up, you're going to, Hunter, you're going to go down and you guys met in the middle or it was it just, you just by happenstance, you all met in the same area. Cause like, just to make sure that way you can network on what they're doing in different parts. Like, you know, you got Blackwater area, the Roanoke, like it's, it's a big lake and they can do multiple things depending on where you're at. We kind of just went fishing. Um, we were both kind of planning on fishing the same areas anyways. So it was mostly just go fishing and and we'll talk and figure out how to expand on stuff that we find. Um, we didn't really like limit ourselves to anything like I'll, like I'll go here, you go there. Um, we did a little bit later in the week, but it was more just go fishing and just share whatever we find and and see, you know, if we can expand on it. And as always, guys, ask a good question, ask a good question and win a prize. So uh, you guys got there like 3 a.m. on Wednesday. Going into, I think Thursday, if my brain's still working, it went up to like 75 degrees and sunny. And when I went out, it was, there were a couple on beds. What what were your guys' thoughts each day of practice? Were you like, yeah, this makes sense? Or were there any curveballs going into Friday and Saturday? I'd say curveball would be Saturday for sure. But Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was pretty straightforward. Straightforward. And... I mean, finding fish was easy, catching them, or I wasn't even trying to really catch them. I was just trying to see them, um, but catching a few here and there too. And Friday I was catching them flipping a jig and like 
two feet of water, but all in the hmm. same kind of areas. I was fishing just main lake guts and like the first third of creeks and like really focusing on those first set of docks and the shallow areas of it. And all the fish were pushed up pretty shallow. Like I don't think I caught a fish under or sorry, over like six feet. Damn. That's crazy. They were shallow. The tournament? No, in the, the first or the third <clears throat> Friday of practice. Yeah. Hunter, yeah, same. I caught, I, caught, I kind of was, I caught a few like scoping. I caught one, like my first cast over scoping over like 45 feet, like off a bluff <laughs> and caught a few like scoping out on points. But yeah, primarily I was up shallow, skipping a jig, skipping a swim bait. Um, but a few like random scope fish here and there, but yeah, everything was primarily shallow. With that said, when you have them all dialed into that shallow and let's just say hypothetically, and you can chime in if this is incorrect, you're seeing them, your, your primary pattern is shallow. Let's say between you know, five to zero feet and then Saturday happens. Did you have to completely nuts and guts and change Saturday morning when you woke up or did you already start thinking about the change, you know, Friday evening as, and if you guys don't know, if you're living under box, it pissed about seven inches of rain in like, I don't know, a couple hours. I mean, Phil's boat was sunk and you could just see the Coors light cans floating in the middle of it. It was bad. It wasn't sunk, but it was full. <laughs> Gamblers don't sink. That bit. No, they don't. That bilge pump was working overtime. I was finding cans from last summer. <laughs> I don't even remember what the question was. Probably. From my uh, <laughs> my my epic bluegill guiding trips, that I was that, running. Your trash can though is like infinite. You really need to like plug that thing off. It's literally, <laughs> no, no. That's one of the best features of the boat. You can't get that on a white river boat. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> I forgot what team I was on. <laughs> 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 I, I can't get any sponsorship dollars from gambler now because they're defunct so <laughs> johnny <laughs> bang my line baby <laughs> let's talk <laughs> we can well, we're gonna circle back to that we have a couple of good questions here uh ricky falk says what is the water temp at smith uh, lowest was which 40, day highest was 54 54 yeah. You I thought you I thought you saw 58 back in a creek somewhere. No, that That's was a, um Thomas and Billy. That's right. Yeah, we saw That's it. That's right. It was like 57 yeah. 9 or 58, I forget. Mm -hmm. it was high. I think the highest it, I saw was like 54. Yeah. We were in the dirt yeah, though. We same. were way back in the dirt. Yeah. Um, let's see. We got Ross Hamilton. Uh Ross, Coors is gonna be Phil's main sponsor this year. I guarantee it. Give him a I shout. That. That'd be awesome. Uh, They're just down the road in Elkton. We got Brandon. Brandon has a good question. Can you practice with just your scope? That's actually an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. you definitely can. I, mean, I can't see what I was doing, but I was still casting. I feel like hmm, I want to see what I pull off here. Let's uh, let's give let's give uh, MC yeah, the four. Yeah, I, I will say it. one thing. One thing that I figured out with the scope, and I know me and Matt were talking about it. Um, there was a lot of fish that they would disappear. Like you'd be following them and they'd go to the bottom and they would sit on the bottom and you could not find them with your scope. Like that's how I was catching a lot of my fish in the tournament, which we'll get to. But yeah, there was a lot of fish that they were on the bottom and you could not see them with scope. That was interesting. And this will give the floor for uh, McCluskey. When we went out, I think it was like New Year's Day. That was a big difference when you're telling me how large mouth set up versus when you got to see the smallies where they would be like literally locked on the bottom on a rock until you threw your drop shot or whatever at them. And then they, they would shoot up. But you were mentioning something about how you scope with practice, right? Well, scoping in practice is, I mean, you can see make casts at fish and not catch them. So in that aspect is it's good for practice and you can see how they react to baits and kind of game plan going into the tournament, what you're going to do. But it's like hundred percent and, and you and I that day, like you can throw a bait on a rock and not see the fish. And then all of a sudden three of them come off of it. Like when they're glued to the bottom, you're not going to see them very good. But I mean, just scoping down the bank, you can kind of like what Matt and I saw. It's like, you're going to see a group of fish, but they're going to be in three to five feet of water. 
And like, you can kind of concentrate on like, okay, there's a bunch of fish over there. Let me go run to the next place and see if I can see this. So you can definitely, pra- scope helps a ton practicing. There's no doubt. When it comes to like how many fish you want to stick, I mean, Hunter, you usually try to bring in up at least 30 pounds for the camera. Is that generally what you like to do? Or do you like to bend your hooks out and shake them off? Like how many do you want to stick in an area before you're like, I'm not going to beat up this dock anymore? This was a special circumstance because I have been working on a boat. I had been knee deep in my boat for the past probably, I don't know, eight hours. So when I got out and they bit, I gave it to them. And I, yeah, I, I cracked them. Like I, I, I had to stop myself. Like I literally went to the house early because I was like, everywhere I go, I catch a big one. But yeah, normally uh, I will stick like probably one or one in an area just to kind of get a sense of like what kind of size I'm working with. Cause you can see them on the scope and think they're big ones and you catch one. It's like a 12 incher mm-hmm. and then you're screwed on tournament day. So I'll, I'll definitely stick a few. Um, and then I'll either just kind of see if I can get some more bites, shake them off, or I'll put, um, I'll put something on the hook so they can't get hooked and stuff like that. But yeah, this was a special circumstance. I needed to get a, get a bass in the boat. You know, what's interesting is like when I was, um, I was out with Billy just just messing around is we kept pulling up and we were just fishing some deep fish just because I wanted to I wanted to hook something and a couple of times they looked like really good returns and they were acting like bass and when we finally started to stick them they were like almost a two pound crappie Mm -hmm. at some point can can crappie and something like that just get kind of mess with you mentally how they set up i know smaller ones act a certain way but do you ever get curious about like okay are these actually bass i'm seeing do i need to like adjust things like just to make sure that the school that you're looking at is legitimately fish or do you like scan it be like there's good ones set up here i'm just gonna leave them that was definitely something that i had trouble with um and i'm getting bet like a lot of times you can just you just know it's a bass you know how they're it's you just know it's bass like you can see them and they're set up like bass um and crappie definitely looked similar but striper looked extremely similar at least at smith mountain to bass and i found that out the hard way um so if i saw some that you know i wasn't completely sure i didn't i didn't like mentally like oh those are bass i'm gonna start here in the morning like i caught one to make sure it was a bass or a striper before i like factor that into my decision making that's big. That's really big. And we got a bunch of questions here that we're going to get through right now as we get through out through this day. Mm-hmm. And a couple of statements because I know my wife gets upset when I say it's a question, when it's a statement. Uh, then it froze on Saturday. Uh, and then this is a question by uh, Tim Missy. Uh, did any of those bass follow the glide on Saturday? Nope. That was quick. All right, there we I go. Might had, well, I might have had like one fish follow the glide, but it wasn't. I could just tell it like was it was not a thing that was going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I threw a I didn't, wanna, I didn't want to spend time like waste time trying. Generally, to- when it's pissing like that, they don't come up. Yeah, it's, it's now strange. you tell me. It's like you would think it would be <laughs> the opposite. Yep. Yeah, I never. Be, like, I've spent, yeah, I've spent entire days in rain and all kinds of rain, like light rain to rain that was worse than it was on Saturday, like shouldn't have been on the lake rain and it never works as good as we think it is yeah i don't try it anymore well phil why is it that one morning we woke up well i was awake i feel like you were half dead and we actually caught a few on a glide like what it, happened? it hadn't started yet what does that mean it, what had it hadn't, started? It hadn't it fully oh. it hadn't set in yet like your hangover the, <laughs> that either that either the hangar didn't fully set in until probably 11 or 12 or maybe later but you know i don't know it yeah they they bit like right up to the breaking point and then once the clouds fully set in and it started to run it, we didn't move anything else but we also the spot that we hit after we fished or the spots that we hit after we um fished the spot you caught those fish in didn't seem to have them so because we tried other things too do you remember those spots 
Well, yeah, I was the one driving right. the boat. Okay, I'm making sure, making sure. Um, yeah, that first spot was it. And your setup, though, dude, that thing is an intense freaking rod compared to mine. And that's actually, I think we have a question right there on swim baits. Let me make sure I pull that one up. Uh, we got one, another one from Tim. Uh, what's the glide bait setup everyone uses? Since I, everyone here but me is just getting on the uh, swim bait craze, so. Um, depends on what glide you're throwing. If you're throwing something that's like six inches, whatever, like ounce to two ounces, you can get away with a jigging stick, honestly, like a heavy jigging stick, like seven and a half foot, whatever with, uh, 18 pound fluorocarbon is probably your best bet depending. I mean, depends on the bait, but as a broad answer, that's what I would recommend um and then heavier like the bait i was throwing was four and a half ounces and that was on an eight foot i believe extra heavy <clears throat> um with the two to eight ounce rating it's a custom rod so i don't remember the rating 100 percent, but um if i may cut you off that was one interesting thing that you told me on the boat which is you don't i was always told yes 25 pound fluorocarbon, you know, you're getting really up there and you're like, hell, sometimes I throw it on 15. I don't know if you do that on purpose or, or what, yep. but no, I what's, do. what's the thought process there? Uh, it's all about the right setup for the action. So like, it depends what hooks I have on the bait. If I've got lighter hooks and it's a lighter bait and I want to get the best action out of it that I can, I'll I'll drop down to like that, that really light line, that 15, 16, whatever. Um, you don't want to go too light, obviously breaking off, but also it'll actually make the action worse. Like you do have to have some sort of like the right rigidity to keep it moving. Right. Um, but yeah, once you get used to like casting these things and working them and everything, don't be afraid to, drop down to like a lower line size that people might not be comfortable throwing because also too like i'm rarely bomb casting these things like when you're fishing laydowns and docks like you are this time of year you're just doing side pitches and flips and whatever you you don't the only time you really have to worry about line breaking like that is when you're yanking back like a surf caster and loading that thing up and zinging it that's when I, you start I, I popping know, your know, fluorocarbon. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> uh, anyone else have a a setup they use? Um, I got a I got a few sticks. I I run the uh, IMX Pro. They've got a couple different models. I think they got a eight foot heavy and an eight foot medium heavy. So I've got both of those. One for like smaller stuff. One for a little bit bigger. And then X Pride. Uh, there's an eight foot. I think it's an extra extra heavy, and it makes it's really good for throwing those like four ounce plus stuff um i kind of go i try to get rods that are rated a little bit heavier than what i'm throwing because you can just be a little bit more accurate when it doesn't feel like the bait's like really overpowering the rod and kind of place in the water a little bit quieter and be a little bit more um you know dialed when you're casting and stuff and then we have another question I want to save here. Sorry, guys. Yeah. In Instagram still is not on StreamYard for some reason, so I just checked that. We have 15 people watching on Instagram, so I got some questions saved. Apologies. Uh, Phil, finish your thought. Uh, I was going to say, let me add to that, too, before we move on. Um, I know a popular option is Dobbins. Go a little bit <laughs> go a little bit heavier on the Dobbins. They're yeah. very underrated. Yeah, but... They have a lot of good action for swim baits, though, because most of their rods for sure. have been, been pretty deep and um, just really parabolic on the swim bait rods. The 795s money, the 806. Yep. I mean, he, he went nuts with the swim bait lineup. Yeah. What's your setup? I'd make a good frog rod, too, just saying. I wish they had longer handles, but that's just a personal thing. Really? Even yeah. longer than they are? They're not that long to me. Ooh, I bet not. <laughs> I got I got long arms, dude. Like tucking oh, that yeah, thing. That's fair. Yeah. It only he looks comes... like Slender Man in the boat, honestly. <laughs> yep, pretty much. I like retracting like I said, the buck, honestly. Some some guys like the shorter handle. Oh, like it's just there. up to what you like. Mm. Yeah. It, they just feel awkward to me for some reason. What what size line do you feel comfortable swinging it on? Like swinging them into the boat. 20 yeah 20 with a big swim bait 
Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And we got a question here. Uh, I'm going to, guys, and you can answer on Instagram. It doesn't show up, so I can't show it over here. So I'll just tell it. Uh, call Colin B. Fishing. Did you all fish the Roanoke Blackwater or the lower end? We're in the Roanoke. Yeah. I stayed in Roanoke yeah. the whole time. I never left. Well, that's because yeah. we were going to that Mexican restaurant. Remember, Phil, down there? And then we yeah, didn't well, go in there. I did more fishing than that, but yeah. <laughs> 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 i did oh go God. way up river on thursday check some stuff out but yeah i caught um well i caught a lot of my fish in the roanoke in practice and tournament i ended up running down uh around the ramp but yeah a lot of there's a few bass in the roanoke i've been fishing the mouth of the blackwater but it's, there's fish everywhere in the lake there is yeah that's the biggest thing like that's why i practiced on wednesday when we got there i went into craddock and like i just fished a bunch of main lake points <clears throat> that i found on google earth that had like just a ridiculous amount of stumps like if you find it this google earth photo i was looking at where the lake was low it's like hundreds of stumps on these points and they were just loaded with smallmouth and they're shallow oh, too. They're in like six feet of water so i just <laughs> jumped around there a bunch like up in Craddock and then the mouth of the Blackwater, uh, but ended up running up the Roanoke and that just felt better. What made it feel better? Big fish, bigger fish. Yeah. I was, I caught better fish up there. I got better bites. I was seeing more of like what I gotcha. wanted to see. The water was slightly dingier. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, I, I call it dingy, but I feel like yeah. everywhere <laughs> the mountain is like, it's clean. Like it's clear water. It's just is slightly it, like has a slight tinge to it compared to like the further yeah, down it's like a heavier mineral stain, I would call it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah. Damn, Phil. Mm. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Look, you know, when you don't have any sort of graphs, when you're rolling flood flintstone like red flintstone like me, you gotta be, you know, you gotta have something to make up for it. <laughs> you are the graph. <laughs> I am the graph, which is also why I didn't leave the Roanoke. <laughs> Just keep me in a straight line, more or less, as much as you can on that windy lake. No, since two of you have fished the res once or twice, would you say the water you looked for kind of matched that? Mm -hmm. Way cleaner than anything. Yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> unless you go way up Bull Run and it's been clean for a while. Like, Maddie, what's the closest thing that you could compare to it? Way up Bull Run. Like when yeah. you get by the bridges, like way up the arms, it's. It's almost cleaner there than it is at Smith Mountain sometimes. But, um, I mean, Mooney would be similar probably. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think yeah. Mooney would probably be a similar water clarity. It's weird, though. It almost looks like ocean, like the Caribbean water. It's like teal colored down by the dam. It's cool. Yep. That's freaking awesome. And then we got uh, we got another really, really good question here. Let me pull this bad boy up. This is actually going to be a hot one. Uh, here we go. We got Jess. Jess has, and you just want a gift card to Tiger Crankbaits. Uh, message me after the show, and I will send you your gift card to Tiger Crankbaits. And then my wife will send me the promo picture I'm supposed to be putting up, uh, but I didn't. So anyway, Chris Zaldane. Oh, hey, it's your boy. Chris Zaldane just did a video looking at other boats at the Elite events. Don't get me started on that freaking video. Some guy guys had eight screens running multiple live scopes on a boat blah 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 how crazy are the electronics at the bfl versus the elite level definitely um yeah yeah it's if you less, but it's like i'd say pretty close yeah, yeah. sorry everyone's got live scopes on their boat some guys run into transducers some guys three graphs up front i mean you're not going to see like a bunch of four graph and three graph setups but they're they're there you see it you need one you need one i agree you need 100%. one transducer yeah like this is i mean <clears throat> patrick walters is probably the best live scoper on the elite series and he has one transducer on his boat no perspective just straightforward facing why i'm sure they help like when you go to smallmouth country the ones off the back are going to help a lot i'm sure but it's like you don't need all that they're just doing it because they either get it for free or have get it at cost or get or they up. think they need it yeah exactly i mean how many guys I mean, on tour have it and don't utilize it right i mean they're, they're the ones fishing, that suck 
the yeah, majority they're fishing of them. for their livelihood like they're mm-hmm. fishing you know to take food home we're fishing for like a hundred bucks so we're fishing to break even yeah <laughs> That, I'm yeah, fishing exactly. to hang out at a lake house. <laughs> Bill, Bill's Here's fishing to drink cores and <laughs> it's in a little wooden trophy. But yeah, I mean, I get, I get the elite guys running like the best setups they, because I mean, that's that's the life now. They're they're chasing. I mean, they're fishing for a living. That's how they provide for their family. So if they feel like they need six wow. deucers, like I I don't think you need that many. But I'm also not fishing the elites. So I think at some point, I think at some point it is like, what is the return on the investment? And, you know, 37 graphs, like I do, there's something about having a transducer off the transom to where it makes you more efficient in practice that I could probably, you could probably get me to convince that argument because I don't have to get up on the trolling motor to check bait out. I can just quickly, I can go, uh, I can drive past all the docks at Lake Norman and be like, boom, boom, boom. These are the ones that have bait under it and go. How much time does that save? There's a, Probably an argument there, but yeah. So two maybe for me, not six. Like, well, I, all you're doing is replacing side scan. So, yeah. but I haven't seen. I mean, I'm sure there's videos of it out there, but I haven't seen what it looks like on those two graphs with your mapping in the middle, whatever. Like, is it how much better is it than side scan? It's not. I don't think it's better at all. It's, honestly, it's actually worse. It might. Yeah, that's, you can't that's back. what. I, yeah, I mean, that's what I was assuming. For finding structure, for finding fish, like if a smallmouth right. is two feet off the bottom on a sand flat yeah. Yeah. on Lake St. Clair, like you're going to get a small glimpse of them. But I mean, some of you can't even see it on the screen. I mean, or what Brian Schmidt, his yeah. boat, his, he's got screens all the way out on the sides. Like I don't I, like your peripherals are not going to see that. And it's the cone is narrow. So you got a split second and then it's gone. So yep. I. I've yet to see a video where anybody explains it and it's like, oh, this is how it helps me. But I was, I can't remember who said it. Well, it might have been one of you guys, but apparently Taku was talking about it. He's like, there's no fish in Japan. Like we yep. have, you said that, right, Hunter? Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in Japan, they yeah, used- yeah. Taku, Taku is pretty much like, we don't, we don't have enough fish in Japan for me to fully understand what fish look like on side scan, but I know what they look like on live scope. So like, I understand that um when he's phys- he was at a disadvantage you know not being able to because we have a lot of fish here a lot more fish than they got over there so you know i've i've seen some giant schools on my graphs like i i recognize what fish look like so i get it i get that argument but yeah it, it is getting a little it's getting a little crazy to to the the commenter's initial question you got your bang for the buck on that one i, I would think if you had to pick between getting multiple transducers and a bigger screen size based on me getting older and probably needing surgery on my freaking eyes a bigger screen makes a hell of a difference going from a 10 12 22 just for separation if you can afford it um let's see we got uh we got high po- hey bud hey tyler's in the chat here we got scarcity value the more you have the less value each one has with you guys need one and side scan no, I mean, dude, and you're kicking butt on Lake Anna, and you don't have a 22 inch graph or anything like that. Like, you, it's it's a luxury, 100 percent to be sure. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think something that is something, something is very underrated. I I didn't catch a single fish on um my scope during the tournament, which probably hurt me. But um, what I used to catch my fish, I was you know going around shoals. Um, is just understanding contours and my maps. Like I. I have my Garmin um, with depth shading and green is 20 foot and yellow is 10. So I, I stuck my boat in green and I was casting up into yellow and that made it easy. And that's how I caught, that's how I saved my tournament pretty much is understanding how to read a map way more than live scope because those fish were glued to the bottom and I was not going to be able to see them on scope. Sorry, <laughs> Ricky, uh, too many screens can block your view, but well, if you're mad, a five inch <laughs> might do that too. But um, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any throw screen another screen. throwable under there. <laughs> yeah, Hell I, use, yeah. Uh, I use a throwable to sit on for tournament blast off so I can see over top. <laughs> That's yeah, not the grass fault though. <laughs> the elite series yeah, grass fault. Don't blame the graph. Yeah. And at um, the end of that Zaldane video, you can see it might not have been that one. It might have been a recent one, more recent one. But um, Davey Height and a couple of the Bassmaster guys, I think Chase Anderson was doing it. They were measuring 
mm-hmm. from like the console up to the grass because it's getting out of hand. Like they're looking at it for safety purposes. Like people are putting 20 inch screens on the dash and like going like this when they're driving 70 miles an hour down the lake. Jeez. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. see, even like, okay, disregard all the boats. Just think about like floating logs or any sort of debris for that matter. Like it is definitely dangerous. I can see that, but like, but with that much end up on the bow, like guys are running three and four graphs up there and the giant trolling motor. It's yeah. hard to see over. Mm-hmm. And then guys, you keep the questions coming again. We're going to be giving away. I'm going to be giving away a gift card to tiger crankbaits as well as Jake's bait and tackle. Now the next uh, couple of questions we have really just kind of gets into the tournament. So I think we could just segue straight back to that. Um, so you get up Saturday morning, you guys, and it's absolutely pissing rain. Does that completely throw you guys completely for a loop, or did you already have that planned just to kind of get, get us back to that conversation? We knew it was coming. Yeah, we all knew that we were, was going to happen. We were, ready. Yeah. we were ready for it. I don't know if ready is the word, but we knew it was coming. Mm. Yeah. So, so uh, what adjustments did you make? Um, I didn't. That was my problem. <laughs> Because I, I was on a, the, the so the, the weird thing is on Wednesday, we had a good bit of rain, nowhere near the temperatures that and um, amount that we had on Saturday. But I still caught them under docks with a mag draft and I caught some good fish. So I was hoping that it wouldn't affect my my derby day. But um, yeah, I grinded docks till about 11 o'clock and had one fish on a jig. So that was definitely not the move. Wait, are you saying throwing the jig was the move or just starting at docks? Like you docks. feel like docks? Yeah, I fished I fished a ton of different baits and tried a tough ton of different stuff to get them to uh to get them to eat on those docks, and it was definitely not the move. And that's interesting here because see Bennett's in the chat. Uh dude message me, you just want a gift card to uh tiger crankbaits. Uh for me, Saturday, the fish were acting stupid. Saturday suspended up high. I only had 14, but lost a five and a four. Did you all see any suspended fish sitting over 30, about 10 to 15 feet on Derby Day? And I guess I'm gonna add to the question. You guys both have forward-facing sonar. So Hunter, not to put you under the bus, but what made you not make that? adjustment so quickly I like scan out there and be like oh shit this is where they are oh i was scoping them i okay. just couldn't catch them yeah gotcha gotcha yeah, okay, I'm I, sorry. I definitely saw a lot of fish um roaming and i was definitely stubborn because i knew that the best chance for me to win was to catch a big bag under those docks so i'm definitely stubborn but um yeah i definitely saw those fish roaming and it should have clicked with me that they just moved out a little bit deeper but I mean, I, I tried Demiki and Jerkbait, all types of stuff, and I just couldn't get them to, to eat my stuff. But, yeah, they were out there. Matt? So, actually, same deal as Hunter. I started off trying to keep everything the same just to see if that was going to work. It was so dark and, like, rain's just pissing down, and it, it just didn't feel right. So, like, I fished through that first stretch, and then I jumped over to – another area that i found fish the day before and when i pulled up to this stretch of docks i was probably like 20 yards off of it right when i put the trolling motor in i start seeing them on the bottom leading up to the dock I'm like i don't remember that being there like i don't remember there being a set of like rocks or anything out in front of these and they're fish and then i see one suspended and then i see another one suspended so it made sense in my brain at the time that they literally just pulled off with the nasty weather because when, I was catching them up. This is like first, this is the first 30 minutes of the day. Okay. Okay. Which also was like a huge confidence boost of like, okay, they're still here. And that was my definitely a, a huge thing for me throughout the day was like, if I just fish where I had been fishing in practice, I know I'll be around fish. Like they're going to be somewhere in this area. Just got to find them. What do you think the key adjustment for you is? And I love like when you have multiple people on like, you know, Hunter, you stuck with something maybe you feel like a little too long, whereas Matt's like in 30 minutes, he's like, he's feeling like he's getting the pieces together. When did you catch your first keeper? Right, both of you. Uh, Matt, you can go first. Uh, maybe like 10 minutes after I moved from the first spot. So we'll say like 30 minutes in. And okay. Five and a half. Well, that calms you down real quick. It immediately like, yeah, other than that my head straight where I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do all day. And I 
We'll continue to try other things, but this is going to be my main focus. This is it's a lineup for sure. Honor? Yeah. Like 1030 maybe. It was. That's a grind. Yeah, it was. But, I mean, with Docs, like, I was like, there's a chance that, you know, they could move up middle of the day. So I was just, I kept grinding and, and yeah, I, I picked up 11 and just did something I didn't even do all week. What was the biggest, what was the biggest adjustment to you moving spots? Um, Cause you only had one right the whole day before you made adjustments. Yep. Yeah. Cut one, like two on a jig. And um, I mean, I just, I could tell that it just wasn't going to happen. Um, and the reason I did it, I made that adjustment. I ended up running down near the ramp and fishing um, some shoals and some islands and stuff. But uh, last year, the day before the tournament, we had, I would say probably, Matt, I don't know if you agree, but probably the same exact conditions as we had Saturday. Like it was cold, rainy, dumping. Like On it was, Wednesday. Yeah. Well, yeah. La in the BFL last year. Like oh. right the night before the tournament, so yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I ended up catching them really good on a on a jerk bait on shoals and points and stuff like that. So I was like, maybe, you know, maybe we'll have kind of similar a similar bite. And uh, ran down, fished some shoals with a bunch of stumps on it, and uh, ended up catching a limit. What what time did you make this move in the day? I'd say probably eleven or eleven thirty. So about and you had one in the boat. Damn, dude. <laughs> such a solid come up yeah that's what i tried to do last year and yeah. i did not do that <laughs> yeah i mean all, yeah. all things considered i'm 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 proud with the finish because yeah i i definitely made a decision that um i mean i if i didn't make that decision i'm coming in with one fish like no doubt. no but and that's the thing we got to take away is not just like the place you get but how you execute your decisions like and the idea that you did scramble and you guts and nuts it and Looking back at the season in November, that might be the difference in AOI points that you you were able to you know do the two minute drill and scrape. Um, but then you know Matt, we look back at you within you know five minutes, man, you pop a five, that calms you down. It, does that mean I'm just going to lock in this area and stay, or did you have to make adjustments through the day? So I felt like I'd be able to rotate through there a couple times and maybe run into a couple more. I could see them like they were definitely there, but they weren't easy to catch. The first one was like, I absolutely will say that like literally bombed a Demiki rig on its head and it immediately ate. And I had probably two or three others that were like super, super interested, but I just couldn't get them to bite. And then I was also in like in the mindset of, I want to jump around a decent amount i don't want to get super locked in because it's a small area i mean it was like a really small main lake pocket i i asked this question a bunch coming from a title potomac background um and Klaus, you might add to this about guarding a spot versus leave it you know, like staying versus going if you're on the potomac a lot of times if you're on a grass flat you might just want to camp there to protect it when you're in a lake tournament like this, it's a small spot. You did crack a five. Did you think I'm going to leave and come back or I'm going to kind of keep around here and just hope they come back in? What was your thoughts there? No, I was totally under the impression I was going to leave and come back. Like I hadn't seen I just got anyone fishing in there. One, I wasn't worried. There was like no one else around me either. So I wasn't super worried that anyone, anyone would come in there. And even if they did, I wasn't, I don't know. I, I'm not real worried about fishing behind someone in that sense. Like, I don't know. Um, but it actually helped me because running around and like telling myself, okay, I, I know of probably four or five different areas that I can go where I know that there were fish yesterday and like, they're not going to be far from here. So hopefully they're just like in this scenario, they've just pulled off those docks or like pulled off being a little bit shallower or they've come out and suspended and they're just kind of chilling. I'm, I feel like I'm pretty strong in that sense of being able to catch those fish, especially when I don't have a plan B, like what they're not biting a jig. They're not going to bite a sleeper crawl. They're not going to bite the jerk bait. And I was trying throughout the day. Like I was trying a bunch of different things, but I just couldn't get it to happen. So basically it came down to like, I'm just going to run all the spots. I wanted to run, pull off a little bit, see if I see them on the scope and go from there. 
And then, guys, as always, uh, ask your questions. You're going to win a prize. Also, I just dropped in the chat. The next two people to sign up for the Patreon will win a bonus gift courtesy of Jake's Bait and Tackle. We have a lot of questions in the comment section. I'm going to hit one more, then we're going to try to get through the day, and then we'll answer all the questions so we can finish up. Uh, let me pick a good in here. Let's go with... Uh, that one requires me to read, so we're going to wait on that one. Let's do this one. Uh, Sunday, we had sustained winds. Uh, would you have rather have the rain or the wind? That's an interesting question. Wind. 100%. Wind. I love wind. Hey, <laughs> wind is the best. I <laughs> love wind. Uh, Jason, wind, wind, but it's great for the bike. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks fishing in it, but on a lake yeah. like Smith Mountain, it is important. It just gets stuff moved. It's basically like creating a... It's current. current. Yeah, so it's current. Funnels, yeah. It's Get something wind. to eat. They feel way more comfortable, I feel like, when there's disturbance on the water. Yeah. Like you, can get them, you can get them to chase way farther to the boat, it seems. Yeah. Jason, you just won a gift card to Tiger Crankbaits. And then we got the... Let me see. Where is that question here? One more, one more, one more to keep up with this, which... Yeah, where'd it go? God damn it. I'm getting old. Uh, yeah, you are. There we go. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, what bait did Hunter throw after the adjustments? Oh, that is. Oh. So I picked up a 110 plus one, um, which I threw a lot during practice and didn't catch a single bass on it um, all through practice, which was surprising because I caught him so good last year on it. But yeah, picked, picked up a 110 and um, yeah, just went jerk baiting for a while. How did you know to do that? Or was it just the Holy Spirit talk to you? Um, I don't know. It's just uh, just going off what I caught him on last year. I was I knew that with the how tough the fishing was for me that I have a lot of confidence in a jerk bait, even though I didn't catch him good during practice. Um, but those fish down there just set up perfect for a jerk bait. That I knew that if if I was going to save my tournament, it was probably going to be on something like that. Uh, Mister McCluskey, what do you think about the? Uh, when we talked about this a little bit on the uh, the boat at Riverton, when we talked about the size of your jerk bait, what you prefer, I was under the impression that the bigger the bill, the less action you get out of the bait. So, if you can go the shorter bill, like what are your thoughts since? You throw um, since talking to Hunter with his plethora of mega bass jerk baits that we got to see, got a lot. Uh, I've always liked the plus one. I don't know if it's so much for the action as much as how quickly I can get it down and keep it out of trees. Like Smith Mountain, yeah, you can fish it down the laydowns like we do at Fountainhead, but most of them is like probably like Hunter Dutt, caught them over a shoal, just suspended fresh. But I just honestly like the plus one. Like I really do not have many of the regular one tens just for the sole fact that I'm trying to catch them deeper with it. Smith mountain. It seemed like the regular one before, during practice, at least from what everybody was saying and what I saw when I went with Matt and the fish were shallow. So you could probably got to have gotten away with it. The action action wise though. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really, I've spent a lot of time with the one ten, but I'm not so much comparing the regular one to the plus one. I know the plus two is different because you, you just have to fish it different for some reason. Like you can't hit it as hard. It'll blow it out and you'll get the line on the first hook. And it's it's just weird. But yeah, the, between the regular and the plus one. Is that also because of water clarity? Because like you said earlier, the res is more chocolate milk versus like, I mean, Lake Anna, when I fished with the first time I fished with Matt, it was like, it felt like 20 feet of visibility. It was insane. Does that have anything to play with it? I not that I've noticed at least. It's just picking the right color is more important than that, I think. Right on. Um, just to finish up the day then. So Matt sticks a five. Like, how did the fish come? Did you just kind of load the boat up all at once, or it was it kind of you had to dink and dunk all day? It was like every spot I went to, I was catching one. And then I had a limit and decided to go back to the spot that I caught that five and a half because I saw a couple others floating around and I caught a, I want to say I caught two one short and then I caught another keeper that didn't call and then I caught one that was like four and I was able to get rid of one of the like smallest fish I had it was a pound and a half or yeah pound and a half so then I had one more that was like 1.6 that I just couldn't get rid of but um 
Yeah, it worked out. And I ended up staying there for like the last hour. I, I stayed there for too long, I think. But I like I could see them and there was like a good group, not even a group, like a, there were there were multiple fish on this break line leading into this pocket. I mean, under the assumption to spawn, like they were up there to either lay eggs or make a bed soon. And they just pulled off the bank and they're just floating around suspended off these docks kind of on nothing there's really nothing out there there was one big boulder um at the back of the creek where it turned into the flat and there were fish on that and uh that's where i ended up making that one last call but i stuck around there too long like I was fishing for fish that i now think just weren't going to eat um but I had a few of them follow and like look like they were interested, just couldn't get it to go. You put a ton of pressure on yourself. And this is your second year with a with with an adult size boat. Um, and being able to travel around all these fisheries. What was that when you caught that that last fish to be a keeper? So now you have your limit before you started to call up. What was going through your mind at that point that you did you had a decent limit for your first BFL? Oh, it was just, it was good. I could, it was at like eleven o'clock too, so I had three, yeah, three and a half hours to upgrade, and I just felt like okay, mission accomplished. And it's a good like I probably had sixteen pounds or something, so I felt good about it, and I figured I was able to jump around some more spots and upgrade a couple times. Um, yeah, felt felt awesome, man. But it's. I put the pressure on myself because of how much I fish. I should be able to put five fish in the boat pretty consistently. And I think consistency is probably my biggest downfall. And I, I'm realistic looking at, at myself as a tournament angler. Like if I know that, okay, I suck at catching limits, I need to work on catching limits. So. But you do the hard thing, like you and the guy that looks like he's in the witness protection program, like you guys catch big fish consistently and that's a freaking skill and a half um like what is it just a mindset difference that you have to retrain your brain about okay i'm gonna pull out the hunter i know you love this like the ned rig and just finish out the limit i, I know ride or die against it <laughs> okay oh easy no, <laughs> no, no ned rig no ned rig <laughs> bad thomas <laughs> no i mean i didn't think i had a ned rig in my boat that whole week <laughs> I caught a three and a half pounder on a Ned rig, so just shove it. Congrats. I've never even seen a Ned rig. <laughs> you can take that to the house. I don't need that. <laughs> it's um, in the Shenandoah. What do you mean you don't know what a Ned rig is? Never seen one. Don't need it. Don't want it. Don't care for it. I'm telling I you, mean, you the, big fish, the big fish for eating bait this big. So, yeah. yeah. Actually, I, I think the Ned rigs, the TRDs, are probably bigger than what I was throwing, or same size. No, I really go the, like there's no difference between the two. That's funny because I just got a bunch of custom like little hair jigs in today. But I rig work. nah dog. This would probably work real well. They work. My I got a buddy <laughs> who makes the crappie jigs that yeah. I caught the the state record crappie on. That's he made me some bigger ones that are I think the ones I was throwing are like 32nd ounce or something like that for crappie, but he made me some bigger ones that are like 316s, and I've caught some bass on them, and they're tiny. Like, they're not even two inches long. Wow. Yeah. That's, I'm glad you brought that up because this past winter, I spent more time crappie and bluegill fishing out of scope, and I was using like the gulp one inch, and I was shocked at like how many damn bass I'd catch on those stupid mm -hmm. things doing that. And it's like, what the hell is a three pound largemouth eating this little thumbtack for? It makes no freaking sense in the world. But then, if you guys are Demiki rigging something like that, do you just whip out like a, a ultralight? Like what the hell do you throw that on so you can feel it? I mean, I'm throwing like an eighth ounce or a quarter ounce. So um with a one-aught hook then or like a negative one-aught? One aught hook. Yeah, like a one-aught. One uh, I think the one I was throwing was a one-aught. But yeah, I just throw it on a uh I think mine was a six nine medium Zodius and works fine. Yeah, I just throw it on a seven foot medium. Yeah. Spinning rod with eight pound leader down here, eight pound on Fountainhead, ten or twelve was fine. But Joey so, Fujita throws it on sixteen with a leader this long and catches eight pounders. Makes me think like, what am I doing? 
Yeah, but that's freaking Lake Fork. And I think it is kind of like where you're at. I feel like if you're down at like Lake Kiwi or Hartwell or, or up north, it's probably different than if it's Fork or, or you know, Fountainhead. Phil, what do you use for your Demiki rig setup? <laughs> First time I threw a Demiki rig was on uh, Anna uh, during Thanksgiving. I found a bunch of fish stacked up down lake and um, I was catching them on a jerk bait and it kind of died like i was literally watching them bust bait on top all day long and it kind of died down for a little bit and i was like well let me try to make you rig uh no scope no nothing just just straight down scan buddy and uh let's see i was throwing yeah i think it was that was a 3 16th head either a three sixteenths or an eighth with um, one of those little finesse zoom flukes, like the real skinny ones. And uh, well, you saw it. It was in my boat. It was like that little scrounger looking like it had that little lip. Oh, on the, it. oh when you tore your so seat like, out, we found it near the gas tank. Yeah. <laughs> it floated back there. It's but that boring. little, it's that boring. little lip catches. So when you pop it, like it kind of swerves out to the side more, like it, it just has a little bit more roll to it. I don't remember what brand they are, but, um, yeah, I was throwing that on eight pound fluorocarbon leader with, uh, like 20 pound braid or something and just swinging it down and running it through areas. I knew they were sitting and I caught them pretty good on that. We have a shit ton of questions that we have got to get to here. So let's go with, all right, because I'm lazy, we're going to start at the newest and we're going to work our way back up, guys, just to make sure I want to keep these fine gentlemen all night. Um, so we're going to get with Christopher. Um, you just want a gift card to, I think I already did Tiger. Oh, you just want a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Uh, email me, uh, reach out on Instagram or Facebook to receive it. Uh, what's your thought process on when to keep force feeding them that then react? God damn it. What's your thought process on when to keep force feeding them reaction baits or when to go finesse? Start with reaction. And if you're getting negative, I mean, if you don't have forward facing sonar, obviously it's, it's going to be, let's burn a bunch of water and see if I can get them to bite reaction and then maybe switch to finesse. But it's, yep. I mean, if you're talking reaction, like cranking or something, I mean, it's still going to be hard with forward facing sonar. You're going to have to, go back to just covering water, burning water. But if you're talking like jerkbait fishing or Alabama rig, that, which is kind of the only reaction you can, I can think of for forward facing sonar at this point with them suspended, like they are, I guess you could, a glide bait would be kind of reaction too. But um, yeah, if they're just acting negatively, just switch over to finesse, you just slow down, pick things apart and, how many fish do you go through? How many fish do you force feed before you switch? On one two? facing sonar? Yeah. Sometimes one. Like if he doesn't, if it's a yeah. super negative reaction and it's a suspended fish in the middle of a drain going back into a pocket that's there looking for a meal and he doesn't eat it or has a really bad reaction to it, like doesn't follow it at all, like kind of just turns and you can tell that they look at it, but then they just swim off and it's time to switch. At least, had, in the, yeah. at least in that area. I had that happen to me. Uh, I was throwing a, a Nika rigged worm and it came up to it and it ran away like it was a burning cross, like immediately turned. And I was like, okay, we're not throwing this anymore because that was that was not what I was thinking he should be doing. And I don't know forward facing sonar at all. And I knew that. Uh, okay, Andrew said, uh, who that dude on the bottom right? I think he's pretty solid at the whole fishing thing. Uh, rumors have been said. Uh, let's see. You got uh, Ned Rig Mafia right on. Live and die with that. Uh, Chaz, <laughs> like double. Uh, Matt. We got we got Chaz. Chaz says Matt. Uh, TS10 too big for those fish up at SML. I'll no, be up there. It's not. It is not. So first Chaz. of all, shout out to Chaz for winning no, the Chaz. Elite Seventy Alpha Series. Is that what it was? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Huge congrats, Chaz. That's sick. On 20 pounds up shallow, places. baby. Let's go. No. Uh, no, that's actually the glide I was throwing around and trying to avoid catching them. But I think that if I 
fished it a little bit more carefully, I absolutely could have caught some fish on it. Every fish that sees that thing wants to follow it. Small ones too, 10 inch fish, doesn't matter. Like they see that, especially in the clean water, they'll come from the other side of the dock to come look at it. Um, it was also, it's also one bait that like, if it splashes near the dock, fish will just come up to look at it, like to investigate. But I do think, I know for a fact that you absolutely get bit on that thing, especially as I'd say as spring goes forward. Let's I say was, I was having an action on, on the trout, which is a true 10 inch. The, the TS 10 is a little bit smaller than 10, but it's got that tall profile. But yeah, who the heck makes this? So I can share I it on be the throwing screen. it. Fish everything. Fish egg, yeah. And and 10 inch 10 inch swim baits are some of the best practice baits. Out oh there. yeah. Absolutely. Like the drawing That's power the first is time I like put a lot of time like practicing with it. I got so many fish to follow yeah. it, like show themselves that I told myself, okay, I need to take it seriously and like focus on just moving fish and see how I was marking every single dock I moved fish off of all day. I think it helped. I really do. I really truly think that it helped. That's the first time I practiced like that. And so if you guys go for it, but you know, go for it. I had Maddie in the boat with me on Thursday night. That's what that's what made it happen. No. Yeah. Yeah. One, sure. one fish. One fish, maybe. But um, sure, yeah. no, I mean when just when I first got in the boat and we were idling out when out of uh, the creek you guys were staying in, you were just like showing me waypoints. I'm like, Jesus. Oh, I told yeah. I don't think I told you that. I literally marked every single fish that I moved off of a dock. Mm -hmm. Probably dumb, but it. I think it helped. No, it definitely helps because they get on specific docks. Like there's a reason they're under that dock. I mean, yeah, they could be roaming and then they just pull up. But it seems like if there's something significant under the dock or around it, that seems to be the dock that they get on. Uh yeah. How uh, and then I think I have the actually I'll show this before I start talking again. I think Phil, you can yell at me. Is this correct? Yeah. This is, okay, thank God it's the right website. Um, so this is the one right here. I think this is the one that just caught it at the res too, because I'm yep. just catching up to everything. Was so, it the ten? Nine pounder on the ten. Yeah. It was on the ten. Oh, it was on the so ten. That's awesome. same spot. Where the hell is it? Oh, Leave that here. fish alone. It's been through enough. That's <laughs> <four times. laughs> Like the third time it's been caught, second time it's had to swim back there. It's like, ah, I just did this. <laughs> Luckily, they left it. That thing's on its last <laughs> leg. <laughs> the fact that, that it's been a year now and it hasn't gained any weight kind of tells you something. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can tell by looking at it. Like, it's. <laughs> That's an old thing, man. <laughs> I mean, I would love if Virginia had something like Texas Parks and Wildlife where we could take that fish and get the genetics from it because that fish is very significant for around here Special. so the one thing i can speak to uh the reason they can't is the reason texas can do that is toyota actually paid them a f ton of money to rejuvenate the texas program and that's why because they gave them like millions and millions of dollars mm -hmm. um if it wasn't for toyota texas would not be what it is so yeah. that's a good, yeah, fun that's, fact that's crazy i didn't know that. that's so wild i know when, the lake we can go pull a bunch of fish out of and get the genes from Waller Mill. That's right. And uh, yeah, just Venmo Matt for those uh, coordinates. When when it comes to waypoint management, um, Phil, I was telling you about my system of like day one of practice, I'll mark like a dock in, in blue. And Dog, then I'll I do... can't even mark waypoints. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm a professional. You um, waypoints on Google Map? <laughs> He just drops I'm a pen. Yeah, it sucks, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I literally do do stuff like that. I I make waypoints on the Navionics app and hold my phone up in my hand while I'm running. That works. Someone uh, give this man a graph. Get it done. <laughs> if you guys could donate oh. an old LMS, that'd be great. I'll give you I'll give you my uh, seven inch Lawrence that I've had for six years that has all the old Fountainhead waypoints on it. Let's go. Oh, that's worth, that's worth <laughs> you can have it. Dude, that's worth some cash, dude. He's gonna yes. sell it and just yeah, not it's, it's gonna pop up on eBay for like 10 grand. So. <laughs> <laughs> One of the found hey guys is gonna be like, oh sick. <laughs> it's gonna be mad. <laughs> It'll be Strykel that buys it. <laughs> It'll oh, be man. Thomas that buys it. He'll be like, I knew yeah. it. I knew he was catching him off that lay down this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him catch it off that lay down. 
<laughs> yeah, you probably know every spot he fishes. <laughs> All right. We see each other very much. Honest, honestly, like we'll see each other some out there during tournaments, but he likes the yeah. section of the lake, and I like a different section of the lake. Yeah. Yep. So. And I don't have a motor, so I'm not going very far. <laughs> you don't need one. You're in a good spot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Phil, we're actually going to wreck it. We're going to have a good time. Uh, we oh, might not yeah. catch anything, but we will, we oh. will have a good time. It's it's the podcast sick. first, first fountainhead tournament is this coming weekend on Sunday. Yep. So if anybody's interested, go up and take my <laughs> money. No, <laughs> <laughs> we I are going to have, I haven't fished fountainhead in probably five months. Oh, maybe. shut up. Don't be Four like, months. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know yeah, if I can oh, catch them. I've never <laughs> fished it. Well, we got a curveball like you guys got. I mean, we got a lot of rain coming. The the lake's blown out. I mean, it's not going to be a scope fest. It's going to be fish on the bank. So, Chad, I want you to pin a comment. How many pounds will McCluskey catch? He says he's at a small disadvantage. 855. <laughs> <laughs> we got Fan Zong? Fan Hong? Fan Hong. Yeah. Any suggestions? I apologize. Be careful. For whatever I say. <laughs> That was brutal. <laughs> Any suggestions for fishing a BFL the first time as a co-angler? Phil, that's all you. I've never fished as a co-angler. <laughs> oh, we got three, three drop shot rods, two shaky head rods, and just throw where he's not throwing. That's, that's a big thing. Yeah. That'll, don't that'll get you a check. Yeah. And, I mean, um, you're, you're not – if you're fishing as a co – your main goal is not to make money. Your main goal is to learn. So just soak everything up, pay attention um, to what your boater's doing and use it as a learning experience. Here's another tip. If you can get him to leave his back graph running with down scan and just watch to see a fish run back your way and just drop it down. There you That's go. Another, you see? another thing you can do. I've never you done that. Me. I just somebody I talk to a lot of people. <laughs> if, you get a, if you get a really nice boater, they'll turn their live scope on for you too. Yeah. Look at these fish I'm chasing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you see what's hey. going on up here? <laughs> that you wish you were up here. You will never get this. You will never get this. <laughs> <laughs> he cannot afford. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Oh, it is so true. Uh, let's see, Travis. Uh, some heavy hitters on tonight, and then there's Thomas. Oh, I'm I'm right. just a Nedrig guy. I don't know how to fish. I just that's talk. That's all I do. I'm not uh, a heavy hitter. That's I just the nicest thing. Fish sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to drink beer and talk. Uh, let's see. That that was yep. a good one. Uh, any suggestions? Oh, I just read that one. Uh, that's why I need somebody to laminate this stuff. Where are my new questions? Shit. Uh, we said Carly? we have Hey Girl, whoever that is. That's hey true. girl, hey. Oh, get in line, trot, Trev. <laughs> <Too bad. laughs> yeah. money. Uh, let's see. Then she said, uh, currently he looks like a hostage. I'm assuming it's Matt or Phil. That's Phil. Uh, it's definitely me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we're, 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 <laughs> we're running on limited lighting here. <laughs> it's probably going to cut out any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> I can hop Bill. off and try to get that uh, uh better no, that's that situation up. You think you like it? Perfect. Yeah. He's it's good. Mysterious. When I when I rerun this thing, I'm just gonna black out your screen. It's just just for the uh, yep. the redo and run a, a voice mixer over it too, so it sounds like <laughs> you know you what? got like a cartel member on here. <laughs> Well, after you and that musky, that wad of cash you're flinging around us the whole damn time. That's yeah, not not far off. A cartel member. <laughs> hey, man, easy, easy. Don't don't be telling people how I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all swim baits? <laughs> <laughs> Tell you that's my live scope. <laughs> Did you all catch any on the draft? If so, did you all throw it with the treb harness or the weighted hook setup? That's What's ten draft. Mad draft. <laughs> Never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> nope. That's a new one. <laughs> no, I had some freestyles that I thought I left at home and figured out later. I I should have tried to rig those up, but no, they I, were absolutely chewing a mag draft. Yeah, 
And they're, they're especially because we got into a skipping contest, actually, I think day two or whatever. There was like six of us on the boat because uh, I throw my mag draft on a saltwater spinning rod setup and like a 500 series reel because I can skip it better. This guy doesn't believe that. But uh, how much how much was your setup to be able to skip? How much was that thing? That's not important. <laughs> 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 Mine was sub sub 200 for the whole damn thing. And it works perfectly fine for redfish, striper and uh, and largemouth. But anyway, we'll just yeah, move you, on. I was, I was pretty efficient with mine. Oh, you another be. viable, uh, another viable technique we didn't cover was uh, just bomb cast in a Kanata, um, just <laughs> trying to keep that docks. <laughs> and you know, you never know. You might run into a five pounder. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never uh, know. Yeah, that was day one, right? Because you were nursing a hangover when you got off the dock and needed that. That was day two. No, I was. Was, I was still good. I was still good. No, that was. Oh, I guess or, his, yeah, his, day his, one for us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I was yeah, I was, I was trying good. to fix my find my motor in the span of five minutes. I fixed my motor and Phil lost a five pounder off of our dock. It was incredible. It was. I sick. checked my phone before I got your call. I had like eight missed calls. I was like, <laughs> "Oh my god, something happened! <laughs> What's going on?" You were like, "You won't believe what happened in the last three minutes." <laughs> sick. Uh, have you all seen an increase in the free rig technique in tournaments? Yeah, a you big can see it on my boat. I think that a lot more people are throwing it than than we realize. Isn't just the free rig just a glorified Demiki rig style technique? Is like a subcategory of the same technique? I think it's like a mix like between a Demiki and a drop shot. Kind drop of. shot, yeah. Yeah, I guess a drop shot. I think it's like a Texas rig because the weight's on the front, and if you don't peg a Texas rig, it can basically do the same thing. Yeah, yeah. you're right. But, yeah, that's the best I way to put it for sure. It, it's it's almost like a Tokyo rig in a way. Mm. But I've, I've never used it, but I mean, it clearly is getting some bites. And we have somebody who I know well who caught them really good on it last year. So, because that's what like the hover strolling thing, too. It's like that's really getting close to Is it its own technique or is it just a subcategory of Demiki rig fishing? I, I don't know. See, uh, I think it's just Demiki fishing. Ain't well, none of my rigs so free. To say. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, we already did that one there. We did that one there. Uh, we're getting through this here. Uh, Thomas promised Patreon members guaranteed access to Smith Mountain Lake. We're gonna need a shit ton more Patreon no, members for me to make Lake that guarantee. Manassas, not Lake Smith Manassas. Mountain. Lake Manassas. Where the hell did you get Smith Mountain? Read, buddy. Not Jesus. It's really hard. <laughs> Slow down, uh, Rick. <laughs> That's why I didn't drive your boat the other day. Hey, Lake Manassas, you can get in there, but I ain't saying it's always like <laughs> I've seen a real easy. very large fish caught out of there in front of my own eyes. It was sick. The next I'm not, I'm not, still will take you to Manassas. I'm not telling anybody what to do, but if you can figure it out, like it's worth a yeah, shot. No chance. Yeah, it's and then two days you can go. And I ain't saying it. So uh, yeah. the next two Patreon members that sign up will win a free date with uh, McCluskey and Phil. They will take you there. Uh, you might end up in jail, but I guarantee <laughs> it'll be an adventure. Uh, I guarantee you're going to catch a whole bunch of four pounders. Yeah, it is I'm, unbelievable. I've uh, spent a lot of time sneaking into places. So. Hence your screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Probably somewhere illegal right now. It does not a lot of water where I live, so you know you gotta gotta get how you live. You know what I'm saying? Way, on Instagram, way way be green thirty two. It looks like he's live streaming from the back of a cop car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're hauling me off right now. <laughs> It would not surprise me. Uh, about that Manassas trip. Straight to jail. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Let me get... Uh, uh, let me get I've back never on been to Lake Manassas, by the way. This is all theoretical. <laughs> <laughs> Checked it out on Google Maps one time. It's pretty cool. Secondhand information. Yep. That's right. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. Uh, here, here we've got... I think we just answered that. Get Burning Water, New FS. Thanks for following up. We did that one. Where was that one? Uh, okay. Do, do, do. There'll be fountain. Oh, I'll be there at the fountain head tournament. We did that one. Um, Who's where the, be at the fountain head tournament? Nisumi. Nasami. Oh, yeah. Nisumi. Nisumi. Steven. 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 Yeah. 
Steve Dog. There should be a bunch of we should have like 20 boats. It should be awesome. How many boats do you usually average? Last year it was like 13, probably that we averaged, yep. but there's we've added four at least four or five new boats that I know people have built out boats or just gonna show up for maybe a couple, which is normally what happens. We it's a pretty big drop off after the spring tournaments normally, but it'll be good. It'll be nice. It'll be a good good start to the year. Bassin with Big Malone. Did the dark or wait, dark sleeper? Did I can read the words in front of me? Did the sleeper crawl get some action on Smith Mountain Lake? Freaking Thomas oh, Elon yeah. over here. I can't read. It did. Man, why, why we gotta be talking about the sleeper crawl? Why does everybody want to talk about the sleeper crawl? Come on, guys. That ain't nothing. Ain't nothing to it. <laughs> no one knows videos this, with it. No one wants to it. Those lifelike crawl presentations don't get bit. It's all about the jig. Well, it's funny is like you can mention things. I've mentioned jerk bait and spy baits on the title of Potomac for years, and people still don't believe me. So like you can say some stuff, but people will still not throw it. Yeah. No, sleeper crawls are legit. Uh let's see. Uh we got fish for five. I got that name right. What did you say to a guy? What do you say to a guy who didn't catch one damn fish in the BFL? Quit. Oh, um, could have been we'd me. probably be buddies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it would just depend on what you did in practice. That was that was probably the easiest BFL I've ever been into zero. Like the mm-hmm. not high rock. That, was, that would have been <laughs> such an like. <laughs> that was so hard. High rock. <laughs> Yeah, that's, all right. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> the conditions changed so quickly. It wasn't safe. I think the water dropped like seven or eight degrees overnight. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was it's... nuts. Yeah. And, and then fish five, I, I was just, but it depends on like, are you a boater or a co angler? Because if you're a co angler, dude, I'm, I, I'm going to say it. People are going to shit on this. Ned rig, uh, like, drop shot things like that that you can just milk bites i mean i went into our cove last day when i i tucked phil to bed i think he went to bed at like two and woke up at like eight and i kept going through the cove and i caught him doing one thing and i kept getting smaller and smaller in my presentation as i went down to like that little bitty trd that hunter was shitting on and i was still catching them i mean they weren't they weren't always keepers but you will catch shit if you get keep getting smaller so if you're a co-angler that's the only thing you really can do i think is just keep going down mm-hmm um let's see we're almost my god we're almost at the end of these questions thank god um i will not be able to say that name did Craig. you all craig craig okay, craig. craig did you all throw the new craig yes i did i actually was thinking about it on my drive home i was like that might have actually worked on tourney day i got a lot of fish to react on i, react really to it. Threw it. I didn't think <laughs> about it I didn't get any like I didn't connect with any, but I they were reacting to it on the on the uh, tournament day. And then we got Jess a charity auction on Matt's Lawrence. That'd be a great idea. We, we could yeah, probably so get the the charity. We could get uh we could use that charity auction to help with Phil's lighting. Um and then let's see, I got that one done. And then we're right working on it. Russ, does McCluskey still use smelly jelly to tame his beard and his hair? No, we switched it up. Got to keep these secrets, you know. Bait fuel, <laughs> pro cure. <laughs> I just got to keep the gray out, Russ. I don't want to look like you. Oh damn! <laughs> How old is he? Turn? Is he seventy now? How old is he? Getting close. That makes sense. Um. Yeah. I, close his age. Yeah, about my age. <laughs> they don't mean it, Russ. <laughs> Uh, and then I'll bang out these questions unless, uh, Phil, you want to help out. Cause I, I know how much you like to finesse stuff. Uh, any tips on fishing a tube jig on the Shenandoah? Dude, tubes legit. People don't throw it enough anymore, including me. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> um, I would go with lighter line. Generally speaking. Just, yeah. Light <laughs> line, like a three and three quarter inch size on like uh three sixteenths ounce head and just pop that thing around rocks and in the riffles and current and um i mean it depends what time of year they're going to be in current more as it gets warmer but yeah um, 
throw it on the current seam lines and everything. Just throw it around a bunch. Gosh, I'm having problems. Um, so I can tag in if you want. The biggest thing I see when you're fishing like river smallmouth, since I'm up here on the Ohio River, is you want it heavy enough that it hits the bottom, but when you pick it up, it's going to drift down. You want it to be natural. If you're throwing like a 3 8 ounce thing and it doesn't call for it, it will get wedged in rocks like all the time. You want as light as possible so that thing drifts down. The coolest thing I ever saw in my live scope this year, it just blew my mind about fish, like fish behavior, is the water's like 32 degrees and you throw a tube on the bottom and you have to leave it there for an hour and a half. But if you just drift something past that rock, they will still come up off the bottom and chase that, even though the water is literally frozen. And it's just because they're in that current mentality where they still have to make a decision. Either they're going to eat it or not. You want to play on that the best you can. And the lighter you get it to where when you pop it, it'll drift a little bit. They have to make a decision to eat or not. So hopefully that helps. And purple is always hot. Like purple tentacles on that bad boy is always a absolute hot color. We got four more guys I'm going to answer because we're going to be here literally all night. Uh, we have over 75 people watching. So it's absolutely amazing on Instagram and everything else. I really appreciate Green pumpkin it. pumpkin or brown? Brown? Mm -hmm. uh, Russ's wife... Russ's wife here, he's watching with readers on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, pay your light bill, Phil. He is literally in the back of a cop car right now. Look, dog. It's struggle bus out here in Poverty Hollow. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I'm trying to not disturb my parents. That's why I'm doing it in my car. Oh my God. What were you going to say? Who me? Once White River sees that intro, Phil's gonna get paid. Oh, yeah, 100%. no worries, no worries. Yeah, We're gonna have all the LEDs and all the graphs. <laughs> Closing thoughts, gentlemen. So I don't keep you here all night. I guess we can go clockwise. So that means you're up, Hunter. Um, closing thoughts. Like, what? What do you want? What do you want from me? I, pimp out <laughs> your shit. I don't know. Like. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, shout out to Fish and Protech. All my BFLs um, videos will be sponsored by Fish and Protech. Um, everything I use all year, whether it's Florida to New York, everything comes from there. Um, Big Bash Dreams, all my gear, all my clothes come from there. And uh, I'm doing a lot more with Intuition uh, Tungsten this year. So we got a lot of cool stuff coming. So pay attention to that. And then you have a new YouTube channel series coming out soon, right? Wasn't going to talk about that yet, but yeah, we do. <laughs> just just pay, attention, pay attention to the YouTubes. We got stuff coming. We're actually going to post this year. Let's go. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Uh, <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> does this have anything to do with the conversation we had one night? Sure doesn't. Sure uh, doesn't. Didn't think so. 100% does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> No, it doesn't. Does the other person that actually posts a little bit have anything coming up? <laughs> uh, ton of videos, ton of tournaments. Really looking forward to all of it, mainly all the big derbies. Hopefully, might be able to swing another good one this year. That'd be awesome. Looking forward to the Fountainhead derbies. If you guys have interest in coming out to fish an awesome John Boat series, on the Aquan Reservoir, where you will see multiple 30 pound bags caught. Probably buy that guy down there. Um, I'll pay his mortgage price, people. Yeah. That's not why I want people to come out, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's a benefit. It's fun. It's, a, it's such a fun club. It's the club I grew up fishing. I fish it with Ace every single one. Um, first derbies this Saturday. The uh, schedule for that's going to be at Fountainhead Bass Club dot com yeah besides that shout out to all you guys for an awesome bfl boys trip i look forward to every single one of these bfls to go and fish also one that's obviously not about any money because even if you get sixth place you're still losing 100 bucks that's all i got <laughs> so pessimistic so pessimistic someone, someone throw up that picture real quick <laughs> i'll find it which picture that's from last year when I was trying to keep track of all my tournaments. Oh, yeah. and I forgot. He kept track for one tournament and then he was like that big down. red number. Miles <laughs> Miles Pong. Miles Pong Pog. Pong Pong. Miles Pong. says, Miles, any of y'all fishing any Toyota series this year? They Probably would not. immediately tell me to leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh I would love to fish Toyotas. I really 
I hate one day events on a fishing moral level. I just think a true after fishing college, so many multi day college terms, I realized like that's the shit. That's where it's like you really get to like metal meets the meat. You can crack them good. I've cracked them good one day and then suck the next and you don't do well. And it really rewards you to make changes the more days you have to fish. So I do want to someday fish like a Toyota series level thing because I think that's truly a reflection of your skills as an angler versus a one day. So I wonder how many people piss off in the comment section with that. So Angler's that's, Choice oh well. has a uh, interesting format like that this year where, uh, Matt, you can expand on it, but two different tournaments in one weekend. So kind of get to. It is. And it's, I guess you could look at that either way where it's like, in your normal multi-day derby, you have day one and day two, and it's a cumulative weight. But the way English Choice does their events is pretty neat. And it's really just to like make sure everyone gets a shot at fishing it. So, you know, if you're busy on a Saturday, you're obviously not going to fish a two-day derby. You stand no chance. So they do two one-day derbies back-to-back. -back. Usually I'll mm. go fish both, and it's like, do bad on day one at least you know what changes to make on day two and hopefully you can still cast a check cash a check or even potentially win it's pretty cool that's freaking awesome phil yeah. what do you got coming up oh pff, bunch of work <laughs> and hopefully i can get out with you and the other boys more um yeah you need to start fishing some tournaments bud yeah yeah it's coming it's coming know. it's coming graphs are coming Maybe, maybe, maybe a YouTube channel's coming. Oh, uh, shout out to my sponsors, uh, Coors, uh, Zen, um, Duck it. paper towel companies, Duck It, um, Gambler Boats. <laughs> Couldn't do it without you guys. Um, Cody Jenks, Blast in the Tunes. Uh, yeah, I couldn't have a better lineup. Uh, really keeps me going out there. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna be white around. claw, white white claw. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, come on, come down, Russ, come down. Let's let's go. It's let, let's hit the river. You've been talking about it forever. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll just be having a good time this year, and hopefully you'll see me at least one more time on this show and. Yeah. One more time? What the hell does that mean? Where are you gonna go? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. You never know with me. I can be anywhere. <laughs> uh. All right, Mister McCloskey. Yeah. I mean, congrats to both of you guys on a good finish this weekend. I know it didn't work out well as well for Hunter, but you made a good adjustment and caught him, which is awesome. And Matt figured it out. And. Thanks for have, making me an honorary member for the weekend, I guess. I was only there for one night, but it was a good time hanging out with you guys and finally meeting Hunter and Phil. Yeah, we had a blast. I, awesome. I, I want to, uh, the one story that we never talked about was when you two first met and you saw Phil's boat. I feel, I think you know, going at, he saw his graph. He's like, oh, cool. Is that, is that live scope? And, and you're like, no, it's not. He's like, Oh, oh I was like, that's, don't believe that's, that's that's 2015 downs can, buddy. <laughs> he said, Oh no, baby, <laughs> what is you doing? I said, Yeah. <laughs> he caught a bigger he caught a bigger fish uh, than I did. <laughs> and I was looking at him for the two hours oh, I got the fish. Oh my off god. Of, off a lay down too or it wasn't even a lay down it was like a pocket some shade <laughs> but he was there and it's bigger than anything i've caught down here i can catch three pounders three and a half pounders but the four pounders not been good but um oh we speaking of not posting my partner posted the fountainhead bass club club record video this Yay. Morning, so if anybody oh, knows, nice. go check that out link We'll put the link in the episode description. Of course, we'll I've linked everything in the episode description on the re-upload here. And then are you be fishing any BFLs this year potentially? Yeah, I'm sure I'll get in I'll, I'll fish some in the Shenandoah division. Unfortunately, I missed the one that I'd been practicing for for the last month. Mm. But maybe Smith Mountain on April 1st is going to be all spawn and fish. So it's going to be very different from what I've been fishing down here for a while. But that one most likely, and then Potomac twice, and then the James twice, I believe. Mm -hmm. All title, so that's going to be thrilling. Um, I think the I think, James. Hmm. The James is fun. Potomac's not so much. Everyone. James is cool. I think. How many, have you ever fished the Potomac? Never. Why are you bitching about it? You've even been there. there. 
My problem with the Potomac is I live on one of the best tidal fisheries in the world. I don't second best. But okay, I'll fight you on that one. I don't want I have to stats. Okay, the one that's worse fight, than where fight, I live. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah. It's just the Potomac is more. Let's go sit around twenty other boats. Like the James, you can run yeah. into a creek and have it all to yourself, and not yeah. see another boat all day, and still fish tidal fishery and grass and. You don't you don't agree, Thomas? No, the no. James I'm, is like one of the, the only places one? around you can run two hundred miles. <laughs> why, why the hell do you have to run two hundred miles though? Like that doesn't. I mean, because I, you spent eighty thousand dollars on a bass boat and you can you can. But that, do it. you didn't spend that much on that damn thing. That doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm I'm not saying I'm doing. I'm just saying that it's the implication. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I like I like fishing hard structure on the tidal fishery, and after yeah. April, after April on the Potomac River, that's done. I part. 100% agree with you there. I think there's better, and this is a great fight in the comment section. I think there's better hardcover fishing consistently on the James versus the Potomac. Potomac definitely is your. I think that's why there's more grass guys that win on the Potomac from Florida than you see on the James. 100% agree with yeah. that. And that's uh, all mine in the grass. How many have you won? Mm, five or six. Maybe <laughs> all like, right. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Thought the number was going to be lower, but that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> I, I get in your place. <laughs> I got. Okay. I was supposed Thomas to say this. Thomas just loves being a minority. <laughs> I, I am basically a minority. Oh, wait, you really think. All right. Hold it on. So you really think that the James is better than the Potomac, Phil? 100 percent what are you what are you going for like wait the to basically is, drop off on the right, james the, more than the, the one thing that's oh, cool the I only do. thing that's cool about the potomac is because you can realistically catch a million three pounders and mm -hmm. nothing smaller than that that's the that's only redeeming quality but like they said i don't want to have to sit in the same grass patch as 20 other boats to do it like I would rather take my chances at the James and, you know, bet on myself than. So what you're saying is that the Potomac's a better fishery, but you just feel shy around other people. It's, it's and that's why you went to the James. Fishery. I you think can I catch think the eight pounders on the James. I think the Potomac's average size fish is bigger, probably. Agreed. But I do think that your the potential for that six, seven, eight plus pounder on the James and the chick is way higher. When's the last time it took 27 pounds to win a tournament on the Potomac? Yeah, exactly. That's, I, but I don't judge the quality. This is my opinion. I don't mm -hmm. judge the quality of the fishery by the top, but the bottom. So the Chesapeake Bay, great place. You can catch 30 pounds first. Oh, zero. And then and then the 10th person will catch jack shit. Yeah. So in theory, are you going to say the Chesapeake is good because you have a chance of catching a 30-pound bag? Whereas if you're in 10th place, you're catching shit. And, and that's kind of my thing there is the James River just drops off more where when you watch it though the big time elites and stuff when they go to the Potomac it's like everybody has like it's like almost like Lake Champlain which is insane for the hell of the fishery where it's like the same shit all the way down mm -hmm. that's my point it's just the fishery health I think you will 100% you will catch a bigger bag at the James but I think the weights will drop off way faster so you yeah. have to get that big bite there's a lot of small fish in the James but that's I don't know. I just the style of fishing on the James is just yeah. way more enjoyable than the Potomac for me. I'd rather skip a wacky worm on the cypress tree than throw it sixty feet out in front of the boat. You know, we can have a whole grass. I feel like there's just so much more skill involved with that. Like on the Potomac, <laughs> you can just sling something out as far as you can and let it sit out there. And luckily, lucky you, a four pounder swims by and sees your senko sitting on a clump of grass. But on the on the on the James, you got to skip something up on, underneath the cypress tree and make a good cast to get that fish to bite. And I don't know. It's just I'm, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm, all, it's all it's all different type. Like Potomac, you got to sit in an area. James, yeah. I'll fish a million spots mm -hmm. in an hour. I'm gonna make sure I upload this to the Potomac team script. This will be fun. Um, I'm, I'm very vocal about this. I mean, I, I still love fishing those tournaments, but it's just I don't know. The Potomac. I don't know. Oh no, I mean, no you're, you're good. Well. I mean, as a co angler, I've done really well in the Potomac teams. We've cashed some checks, but it's. I don't know. It's just no. after, fish, after fishing Fountainhead and seeing how much better a, a deep reservoir can be, just with the fish quality, it's like coming down here to Smith Mountain, like it's not even comparable.
Well, well yeah, to, I got us way off on a tangent as we were trying to close it out. No, that that's what I absolutely love about this. Because, like, again, you and Matt and I guess the majority of you here, except Phil, like you made a lot of your money looking at fish, deep, clear water. And, and I get this a lot when I bounce between, you know, river rat guys and then like the Billy Coles types and both completely hate the way the other one fishes. And they don't think there's a value in the way they do it, which is fascinating to me. And when it's like, oh, I, all you got to do is camp in Mata Woman, you catch fish. It's like, well, there's a quality in it. Because if you look at, I, I got to interview the guy that won the last Toyota there. He moved like 80 yards in a day. And he was able to pick that thing with a punching rig. And he could tell because of the different vegetation types. And so it makes me feel like there's a quanti- there, there's a quality in understanding how to camp and pick apart. And that's why Florida guys are so freaking good at picking areas apart. But on the flip side, they suck doing like the res. They cannot run a lot of spots. And I think it's just a cultural thing that it's hard to do both. You're either run and gun, David, you know, um, Brian Thrift, or you are going to camp. But it's hard to see the Jacob Wheeler types that can literally do both when needed. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're blessed to have both. Little, yeah. Hunter down to the James and then us up here by the Potomac and Matt down by the James. It's like we have two awesome title fisheries. As much as I don't like the Potomac, but it's still it, it still is a good place to go fishing. I think that's because I'm glad. But I think that's why you have so many river rats that I don't think will ever make it outside of the area because they are really good on the Potomac. But you put them on Smith and they get scared of the clean water, like, and that's a big issue. Mm-hmm. But I, gotta, I know there's got to be able to do both. Like yes. I like I when I'm fishing here, I love it. But I mean, when I'm at Smith, like. I can completely switch gears and I love doing that. Like you just gotta, you gotta be able to love it all. I a hundred percent agree. Um, I was trying to close this out. Shit. Uh, where I'm was talking. the sponsors? We can go all night. Yeah. <laughs> How many people you still got watching? Uh, we have 60 and Instagram. We have five. So we're 64. Off. Wait, 65. I just did oh, that math. That was, <laughs> um, that was a bad one. So good at math. Hunter. So I don't, Hunter, who, in your opinion, is the best now on the James? He's the best Ray on the river. Ray Hogg. Right now, it is very difficult to beat Ray Hogg. Um, yeah, the he's definitely the, the best right oh, now. Hell. Is that your username, or is that actually a person? <laughs> 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 I'll steal that as a username. Are you kidding me? That's sick. <laughs> Go look up his stats. You'll see what I mean. But, yeah, I think he had... Um, 27 pounds last year had 28 something this winter like the dude catches them and he's probably he's super versatile and yeah he's he's one of the best right now if not the best shout out to ray chris uh ferroia fur ferroia uh, live uh i live thank you i and you how many beers have you had tonight Phil? <laughs> like one and a half uh, I live started, buddy. <laughs> I live in the upper Delaware and retiring soon. Uh, if you had to choose between Lake Anna and Smith Mountain Lake, what would it be? Smith Mountain. Smith Mountain Lake. Don't even think twice. Smith Mountain. There's no question. Don't even think twice. Yeah, <laughs> like, don't even, even. <laughs> after this trip and after fishing there a few times, like in the last year, I don't think there's many other places that can compete with Smith Mountain. You have options to Smith catch Mountain, smallmouth, largemouth, big striper. It's a if beautiful Smith lake. Mountain had a hydrilla explosion, it would be one of the top 20 lakes in the nation. So the only contrarian thing I'll say to that is I 100% agree it's the best lake, but it is on the ass end of nowhere. If you're yeah. around Lake Anna, you're right to Frederick for all the electric motor only lakes, uh, the res tournament, or you can go to Richmond. It's kind of centrally located versus Smith. It's just that's and then Kerr, I guess is what you have. But well, uh, 100% he's in like, Delaware. I mean, he's making a trip regardless. So you might as well go the extra whatever it is. Yeah. You know, yeah, w- once you're in Monita, you don't need to leave. Yeah, there's that's it's a beautiful area. It is. The lake is beautiful. Mexican restaurants are good. Yeah, they are pretty Mexican good. Mexican restaurants are banging. Dude, we yeah. tore that bathroom up. We're not going to be allowed back Ooh. in there. God. All right, Great music a- too. <laughs> Only restaurant I've been in that played Dolph. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> so sick. I saw some things in that bathroom. 
<laughs> well, flush, damn it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. No, nah, that, that poor, we're not getting our deposit back on that house, but it was a nice house. Yeah, the house is uh, wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you guys do after we left? Uh, we had to clean Don't the ask he, that question. Thomas he, hit the bathroom one last time before we left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at that point, it was no, there was no return back, but you yeah, didn't wake up until like 10. So it didn't. No, I, I did. Some I cleaning. saw them out the door. Yeah, he did. I woke up and you're, I I made a video of you still sleeping. Yeah, because I woke up early to see the boys out. So they had, a, <laughs> they had a good, you know, good exit. They felt supported. You were in bed. And then who got you a coffee you in the there, morning? Supporting the boys, which who got I you appreciate a that. Yeah, I appreciate that. I woke up. I woke yeah. up at one a.m. and I hear Mark Zona. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep to the sweet sounds of <laughs> Bass and MLF and Mark Zona. It was so loud. I thought Mark Zona was in our house. <laughs> he was. <laughs> that 80 inch was cranking. That TV was massive. Huge. That's when did you, go next year. Yes. When did you uh when did you throw up? Was that night one or night three? Um that was <laughs> night one or night two. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, Bassin with Big Malone. Uh, the one on the upper deck at Mangoes. Uh, that's yes. the place we went. Yes, I feel that like that's right. It yes. was called. Oh, what was it? I forget what it was called. It was some Mexican place well, name. It's yeah. right on the. It's right on. It's on the west side of the Hailsford Bridge. Like as soon as you go over it. Yep. It's called like Cancun or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that place was freaking good. Uh, let's see what happened to that damn question. I just saw, so I'll just ask it. Uh, what is your favorite speed for throwing the mag draft? Seven. There, you mean like retrieve speed or real speed? Yes to both. I guess gear ratio. Yeah, seven. Mag. Every mag draft size has a speed that it works. And you got to find that sweet spot. Because if you oh, no. it's gonna blow up. Phil, <laughs> remember when manic, I gave you? I'd, I'd throw it on a six and a half, <laughs> so I can just we... crank it faster. I don't have to. So I was throwing remember... it on an XG, and, and was it... was that the rod and reel that you destroyed when I forced you to throw the eight inch, and you skipped that thing into the side of a ten thousand dollar boat? No, boat? that was my swim bait rod. Uh... And... I was not having a fun time. Yeah, the XG is definitely too fast. I'd rather yeah. I'd rather slow down a little bit. So I think the H the HG for the mag draft is perfect. Yeah, uh, most of, most of the glides I like the HG for. Uh -huh. Right on. Oh yeah, glides. Yeah, higher yeah, gear glides. all the way. All right, and then we got uh we got this guy yak fishing hey guys what type of line and what size are you using for a six inch swim bait let's go with uh mc first uh the six inch mag draft i'll go down to like 15 but 17 is the perfect number for me 17 yeah for the six inch on a glide a six inch glide i might throw 20 depending if i just have it on the rod but 17 is probably your bread and butter I would concur with that 100%. You should ask Phil. Phil? Well, I mean, yeah, assuming he's talking about the mag draft, yeah, 17 fluorocarbons, the deal. Glide baits, like I said earlier in the podcast, uh, play around with what you have because different glides respond differently to different line. Um, generally stick to fluorocarbon. I've thrown a lot of glides on... Um, Copolymer, just because I didn't want to spend as much, you can make that work too. Um, if especially if you're throwing them shallow and you're not trying to sink them down on live. Um, but yeah, like a a six inch, throw it on like eighteen, sixteen. Uh, but like you really need to play around with it because like the S waiver, they're like fifteen. The 168. Um, I've had the best results with that. Um, and a rod that's parabolic enough 
to not yank the hooks out of their mouth whenever they start shaking around like a madman. I've lost a river tournament throwing for smallmouth. Lost some of the biggest smallmouth I've ever seen in my life because I didn't have it paired with the right rod, and they threw that thing. Um, and just now, this is smallmouth. Largemouth, I don't have as hard of a time, but with smallmouth, I'm throwing that 168 or whatever six inch glide I'm throwing. Uh, generally, it's that taxi shad, the TS6. I'm throwing it on a heavier composite cranking rod. Like I have the St. Croix Mojo Bass crankster or whatever it is. And I don't even know if it's rated for like DT10s, but that's what I have the best luck with because they cannot break the uh, tension on, like they can't get any slack with it no matter what they do. So that works for me. I don't know. That might not work for other people, but that's what I recommend. Or you could be like me and throw it on a spinning rod. Or you can don't throw it on like a spinning rod. How about no? <laughs> you you really Hunter, what is your hate with my setup? You were so mad at me, like on a visceral level, that I was skipping a mag draft on a spinning rod. Like I've never like that was like some weird like Lebanon Israel hate right there. Like it was, was pure. That was Lebanon. the grossest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> What people do it in salt water? All okay, you know, this guy called Nolan Miner. I mean, he might be a little mad at you for that because uh, he catches them on big poppers and spinning stuff. Nolan can catch fish on a stick that he finds outside, mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he's the exception. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, now that, that place is freaking awesome. And are we gonna try to get the same house for Smith again in, in April? Like, what's the plan there? I think it depends on numbers, but yeah. Yeah, we might have to have a uh, McCluskey and Phil snuggle on the couch, but we can make it work. It was a long couch. That was actually a really long couch. You, you and Thomas shared a nice snuggle on the couch. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't planning on it, but that's kind of how it <laughs> happened. <laughs> it looked like it just happened. <laughs> Your feet smell so bad. But that's just a random thing. Um, that they did. <laughs> <laughs> that's the least surprising thing I've heard on that. They were sweating out all the booze. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, let's see. I got Brandon. Uh, let's see. Thomas, are you going to fish tournaments? I don't know. Nope. One day. Uh, once I get some more nope. sponsors <laughs> to uh, pay stuff, you really don't want to watch me fish. Honestly, let's just be horse. real. Just <laughs> sorry, Charlie. <laughs> let's think about that for a minute. Like, do I want to stay married? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I could just pawn her off to someone else. I guess that'd probably be the the safest thing to do. Uh, who's this new comment here? Oh, holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> that was quick <laughs> with the quickness. <laughs> Hold up. It me. Uh, I was cuddling Phil one night. I think it was two nights. Was it two nights or one night? It was we just one. had room. We had plenty of room for Jesus. All right. You can go mm -hmm. on Matt's Instagram mm -hmm. and look at the picture. Yeah. I did there get a no good contact. Picture. That was to be fair, Carly. That wasn't the worst thing. I think all five dudes shared the same bar of soap over a week. So I think that was <laughs> the most intimate thing. Um, not in the same shower, though. Let me make sure that's. Uh, yeah, that's clear. I was just feeling <laughs> tough. At the really same. Damn shit. Shit. You stole it. <laughs> But you didn't know. you call your co-angler from the toilet, Hunter? Like like that night? <laughs> no, you, you never heard that, made whole that up. I was just in my room. <laughs> HPS fishing here. Are you yeah, call a couple fives. This is good. <laughs> <A> couple fours. <laughs> no way. Is McCluskey a singer? I saw that comment. Pull it back up. That? I saw that. Nothing gets past me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim. Now All right, McCluskey. Let's hear the pipes. Come on, McDouble. <laughs> Oliver, Oliver North can keep that song. I may have sang it in my truck a few times, but I mean, it tonight. McDouble. Are you just going to randomly just do new McDonald nicknames for him oh, every yeah. single... Oh, yeah, for sure. Phil kind of looks like McLovin. <laughs> Yo, let's go. I, I should get one of those McLovin fake IDs. 
We need to get a pirate flag for Sunday. That's what we need is a pirate flag for the awesome. back of our boat. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We do. All right. That's awesome. Uh, we are out of what? What a we, pop. Thank We're you. We're sitting right at two hours. I, yep. And I'm going to shut this bad boy down before it goes way off the rails. My medication is wearing off. What the hell was I supposed to do for the sponsors I do have? Uh, Yikes. Here we go. I know, right? Uh, so anyway, these were the... Uh, these were the colors that won uh, for Tiger crankbaits. They are the uh, where are the colors there. They are hot cherry and the crab. Uh, this will be some of the baits that you can get uh, with your gift cards. You can also, if you're a Patreon member, you get ten percent off all of your orders to Patreon as well. Uh, I think I already did closing thoughts for everyone. So sweet. This will be re-uploaded tomorrow morning after I edit it and make sure it doesn't get dinged by the old YouTube algorithm. Uh, we, I gotta go back to this. Here. We are done for tonight, but we might be talking a little bit later. Uh, we'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. Why River? To Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.